All right, good afternoon, travel agents, and thank you guys for joining me for today's course, Introduction to Search Engine Optimization. <clears throat> My name is Shay Akanaso, and I'm the product manager for Agent Studio. Um, and I will be sort of your course instructor for today. All right, now, if, you, if there's anyone on here that's never taken an Agent Studio course, uh, just a couple of quick guidelines. First things first is that this is a course, not a webinar. And the reason we call it a course is that <clears throat> we anticipate, we anticipate rather, and we encourage intera um, interactivity. So, in other words, you don't need to wait for me to go wait to the end of this presentation for you guys to ask questions. I urge you guys to ask questions as we go along. Also, I have a tendency to mumble or speak low. So if you need to speak up, repeat anything you don't understand, feel free. Or if you just need me to go over something again just because it didn't make sense, feel free to ask me to do that. I have quite a bit of information to share with you guys today, so I want to make sure that you guys are able to all grasp and understand what it is I'm sharing with you guys because it is important in helping making sure that your site is <laughs> search engine optimized. Now, just to be sure, is there anyone on here who cannot hear me? And I think that's probably a silly thing to do because if you can't hear me, you won't hear me ask that question. So let me just type this into the chat box. Oh, and just so you guys know, when you have questions, just type it into the chat box. Um, everyone else is, is muted except for me, so I won't be able to <clears throat> hear you if you're using the mic on your computer because you're muted. So any questions, type it into the chat box and I answer questions as we go along here. All right, so before we get started, oh, okay, Diane says she can hear me just fine, so that's great. That means it is working. All right, um, I'm just going to type. All right, seems like quite a few people can hear me. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> All right, so. Why should you care? So I, we have quite a few people on here today. And why are you guys here? Why do you guys even care about SEO? Why do you guys even care about having a website? All right. Well, I think everyone here has the same idea. Pretty much everyone here knows pretty much the same thing is that internet is the new marketplace. I think I don't need to, I don't think I need to sell anyone on this that the internet is in the marketplace. Because if I do need to sell you on it, then you've been under a rock for years now, all right? <clears throat> but what I would kind of want to give you guys sort of a basis or understanding or kind of drive home to build to the point of why we should care is simply this. And you can see this on my screen here. And if I, and if anyone of you guys wants um, this presentation, um, actually the recorded version or the slideshow or the PowerPoint I'm going through, please just email our support team and they'll get it over to you. All right, you can email them at support at agentstudio.com. Right, so just the one thing I just want to use to just sort of drive home to you guys, right, is that first of all, we all know and we all agree that the internet's the new marketplace, right? So whether you're selling travel, books, clothing, the internet's where you want to be. So for for us travel agents, or for you travel agents rather, the internet's important. Now, what makes it really more important is this, right? With the birth of the internet, your clients, and I'm talking about even those guys that have been booking with you for years, all right? Potential clients, your current clients, they're all going to the web and they're all doing research, right? Even before they contact you, they're doing research, all right? They're going to different sites, like they're going to booking sites like Expedia. They're going to destination sites. They're going to cruise line sites, cruise suppliers. They're doing searches on Google. Like they're doing their research, right? Because the internet has given the consumer, the ability to research anything they want to purchase, right? So everything from travel to cameras, you can research, all right? So, <clears throat> so one thing we want to understand here, right, and the reason why we should really care and why it's important that we care is that your clients or potential clients, 45 days prior to booking a vacation, visit at least 38 websites, right? That's the one thing I want to highlight just so you guys get an understanding of why, a better understanding of why it's important that you guys SEO your sites. Because your clients, those that already exist, or even better, the ones that we're after, which is potential clients, right, are on the web and doing research 45 days prior to booking a vacation. So they already know, most likely, 
just the way the corporate world works or the job works, they already know when they're going on vacation, most likely. Right? They probably go around the same time of year. They have an idea of, what, of when they're going to take that vacation. Now, <clears throat> Expedia study just realized that probably about 45 days prior to the vacation is when people start to figure out where it is they're going and what it is they want to do on their vacation. Right? And this is where you know, SEO on your site becomes important because the idea is that on average, they visit 38 websites and doing research and trying to figure out what it is they want to do on a vacation. You want to be one of their websites. Ideally, you want to be the you want to be their last stop. So if they're searching 38 websites and they're num- on website 35, you want to be the last stop they go to. And with all the content that Agent Studio provides you on your website, you have more than enough information on your website for them to do research. Now you just want to SEO your website or search engine optimize your website so that you're showing up as one of the websites that they're visiting when they're doing their research. Okay, so that's why it's important to us. So that's then that's what I'm going to use to help build the case even further of why it's important to us. All right, is that our travelers are searching the web 45 days prior to the website, even if they already know, even if they already have someone they book with, they're still doing research and they're still searching for either a better bargain, um, different destination options, different vacation type options. They're still doing their research, so you always have an opportunity. If you SEO your website, to have one of these um, travelers stumble across your website and turn that into a bookend, right? This is this is why you should care, and this is why SEO is so important. <clears throat> so, what is SEO, right? I believe most of you guys already have an idea of what SEO is, right? And SEO is the acronym for Search Engine Optimization. If you guys don't already know that, all right? I have a brief. Uh, definition up on the screen. I'm going to read it out and kind of highlight some things through this definition. All right. So search engine optimization is a combination of strategies and tactics used to increase the amount of visitors to a website via a high ranking placement on search engines. SEO helps improve the chances that your site will be found by search engines. There are no shortcuts. Okay. So a couple of things to just highlight very quickly. Search engine optimization is a combination of strategies and tactics. That's the first thing I want to kind of highlight and bring out, all right? So there is no magic formula, all right? There is no algorithm. There is no, you know, computation that you have to do in order to optimize your website. Rather, it's a combination of strategies and tactics, which we go over in the intro course as well as the advanced course, all right? that help you get a high rank and placement on search engines, all right? So the end goal here for all of us, the, the, the big picture goal is that we're hoping to increase more leads, which eventually, which should increase more dollars for us. And SEO is one of the ways we're doing it, okay? That's the big picture. Now, the direct <clears throat> result of SEO is that we're going to get more visitors to our website. And the way SEO helps get get the visitors to our website is high rank and placement on search engines. So the strategies, the combination of strategies and tactics that we use, the goal of that, right, of those tactics is to get high rank and placement on search engines. Okay? That's the immediate goal that we're striving for with SEO. Okay? I hope everyone understands that. All right? Because the visitors we're going to get is by high rank and placement on search engines, and I and I want to emphasize high ranking, because you know when you do searches at times, you can see that there are thousands and thousands of pages that come back with search results, and just by the fact that a lot of us use the web as it is, you realize that more times than not, we don't go past page two, page three, if we're lucky. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're getting high ranking placements here. And the last thing I want to highlight is there are no shortcuts. There's only one, if you want to call it a shortcut more than anything else. Uh, if you want to call it a shortcut, shortcut more than anything else, is that you can pay someone to do SEO for you. But understand that even if you pay, they're going to be doing the same thing I'm going to cover here today. And even if you're going to pay someone, it's still a good idea to know what you're paying for, to get an idea of the process. All right. But overall, there really are no shortcuts to SEO. So what I want you guys to take from this definition is that, first off, that you can do it. Even though you're a travel agent and you're not a computer engineer, you can still SEO your website effectively. 
All right. It's there's nothing. You don't need to go to school for this. You just need to understand the strategies and tactics used. Second thing is that the idea of what of the strategies and tactics that we're going to use is to get you a high rank placement on a search engine. And I'm going to talk more about this as we get into some other things later. All right. And the last thing is that there are no shortcuts. OK. Any questions so far? Awesome. All right, so let's dive into SEO and what, you know, and, and how do we do this and how do we go about it? Well, as I mentioned a second ago, there, we have two courses, the intro course and the advanced course. And literally, you know, even if you take the advanced course after the intro course, you definitely want to take the intro course because the intro course is here's where we're going to lay the foundation of what we build on in the advanced course. Okay. So I highly urge you that if you haven't taken, if you've taken the advanced course already, before you do anything, make sure you sit through this course and get an understanding for this. Because what you get in the intro course is the foundation of your SEO, if you're doing it right. Okay. And if you're taking this course once before, welcome back to taking it again, but also make sure you're taking the advanced course because you're going to build on what you learned today. Okay. But this first part of it, right, the keyword research, this is a very, very, very important part of your SEO efforts. All right. So if we take a, a, a step back into time into when <clears throat> the internet first started becoming this big, this, this thing that became an everyday part of our lives and we, everyone on this call, I'm pretty sure, is old enough to remember when that happened. All right, I do remember when I when it happened. I was right. I think I was my first year in college, or just my last year of high school, one or the other. When I first like started becoming getting on the internet a little more regularly, and I remember that I really only went to one place, and that was the AOL chat center or whatever that is. That was the only place I knew to go. All right. Now, eventually, I found some other websites to go to, but there were places that people told me about. All right. So back then, there was no way to really do like a, a search of the web and find other websites. People told me about websites, and that's how I got there. And then I remember when I think it was Ultra Vista, I believe, when those search engines sort of pop up. And then I remember that it made it a little easier when you just went into a search engine. You type in a couple of words of what you're searching for, and then you got a list of results. All right. So the search engine sort of became this became a necessity once the internet became so widely used because as I mentioned a second ago, unless someone told you about a website, you wouldn't know that website existed. So the search engine sort of became like the yellow pages for the internet. And basically how the search engine worked when it was first launched was simply this. It matched the keywords in your search term to all websites on the web that use those particular keywords. That's it. That's basically how it worked. So we'll crawl the millions, the thousands and millions of websites that are out there to see how many of those websites match keywords that you have in your search term and then bring back all those websites as results. Okay. And what started to happen was that web developers became a bit more savvier because once people started to figure out how to monetize the web, then web developers realized that like traffic to my website increases, makes more money. So I will put as many keywords as possible into my website so that I get as many keyword matches as possible so that I am showing up in more and more search results. So then very quickly what happened was with savvier web developers, you started getting bad search results. In other words, you would start searching for something like shoes and then you will find things like, you know, like travel showing up in your search results because it was an exact keyword match that the search engines were using and the web developers were putting as many keywords as possible knowing that all the search engines did was do a keyword match. So then what happened, and this is how Google became the, the search engine giant that it is today, is that Google came along and started looking at and developed an algorithm to start looking at other things to help rank or to help determine whether a website was definitely related to a search result. All right? And that's how we get to where we are with search engines today. 
All right. But the whole point of me telling you that story is that it still works off the basic principle of keyword matches. This is why keyword research is so important to your SEO efforts. Because the bottom line, the basis of SEO is keyword matches. And when I say keyword, I'm not just saying a word or two here. I'm also talking about key phrases, all right? Full sentences, even a question, all right? These are all things that you can be part of your <clears throat> keyword research. It doesn't have to just be one word or two words. It can be a full sentence if, ne if need be. But the idea behind your keyword research is to find those keywords that work out for you, right? This is the basis. This is the foundation of your SEO efforts is this keyword research, all right? Now, I'm going to refer back to something I, I brought up in the definition there, high rank and placement on your website. I mean, so high rank and placement in a search engine, all right? When I say to figure out keywords that work for you is that you're trying to find those keywords right that are related to your business right because again search engines have gotten smarter now it's not just going to be based on the fact that you just have these keywords in your website there are other things that the search engines are going to look at to make sure that these keywords that are on your website make you a relevant site to whatever the search term is so you want to first make sure that the keywords you're picking are related to your business and that you're not just finding the best keywords that are out there all right, that's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is that you want to make sure that these keywords are keywords that are actually being used or being searched. All right. And last but not least, you want to find keywords that not too many other websites are using because if you pick a keyword, no matter how good it is or no matter how much it describes what you do, if a million other websites are out there using it, then you're not going to get that high rank placement in a search engine. Okay? So when we're doing our keyword research, we want to figure out three things, right? We want to make sure that we find keywords that are related to our business and what we do. We want to find keywords that people are actually searching and keywords that not too many other websites are using. Those are the three things that keyword that we're trying to determine in keyword research. Now, how do we go about this? Well, <clears throat> this is not a hard, fast rule, but this is sort of the this is the way I go about this. All right. So the first thing you want to do is that you want to brainstorm a list of twenty to twenty five keywords or key phrases. Okay, so these are either one word, two words, a full sentence, a question, whatever the case may be. But you want to you want to put together a list of twenty to twenty five, and when you're brainstorming this to help guide you and make sure that you keep on the path of making sure that you're picking keywords that are related to your business, you want to keep one or two things in your mind. First thing you want to keep in your mind is, in the back of your mind, keep telling yourself, how do I describe my agency of five words or less? Okay. That would be one thing you want to kind of keep in the back of your mind. The other thing is that, what is my unique selling point as an agency? What is that thing that I do different? Okay. If you kind of keep these two questions in the back of your mind, has your jotting down your uh, your brainstorming your list of 20 to 25 keywords it will help guide you and keep you on the path of making sure you're selecting or coming up with keywords or key phrases that are directly related to your business the product that you sell and so forth okay now 2025 is not a hard fast rule if you choose to do more fine if you choose to do less that's fine as well but if you say 20 to 25 is that it gives you a decent amount to start all right, and then also it gives you the opportunity to kind of get out those bad keywords. Now, what are those bad keywords, right? Well, bad keywords are words that, for example, either they may seem perfect for you and too many sites are using it. So here's an example of a bad keyword, all right? You could be a travel agent that sells cruises, right? And cruise sounds like a great keyword. That is what you sell. You sell a lot of cruises and so forth, right? But cruise is a bad keyword in the sense that if you start to think about how many other travel agents sell cruise and are using cruise as a keyword, then you start to think about how many suppliers offer a sort of cruise product from cruise lines to shore trips. All right. All these different folks use cruise as a keyword. Very quickly, you're going to find out that cruise is not a good keyword for you because so many other people are using it. All right. 
So that's the reason I go 20 to 25 because you're going to probably start out with those quote unquote bad keywords as your brainstorm because those are the, the general keywords that you think about when you think about your business like cruise or tours or travel agent and so forth, right? And But 2025 gets you to that point where, and if you're keeping in mind, you know, the two things I mentioned before, you know, describe your agency in five words or less or, you know, what is your unique selling point, then very quickly in 25, you should probably have quite a few keywords that describe your business very well and wouldn't necessarily be considered bad keywords. Okay. Does that make sense so far? Any questions? Okay. Right, so that's the brainstorm aspect of it. <clears throat> the second part of it is that once we have our 20 to 25 keywords, we're gonna actually find out which one of these keywords is an actual good keyword for us to use. And we wanna get five to seven strong keywords out of this. So from our 20 to 25, list of 20 to 25 keywords and key phrases, we wanna whittle, whittle it down to five to seven strong keywords or key phrases. And we're gonna use Google's Keyword Planner to figure this out, okay? And what Google's Keyword Planner is going to is going to show us, and we're going to look at an example here of the Keyword Planner, <clears throat> is that it's going to give us two things. It's going to tell us, you know, how many sites are using this particular keyword based on competition level, because that's something we want to know. Okay. And then it's also going to say how many times this particular keyword is searched a month. It's going to give us a range. Okay. Now, the, again, these are how we're going to determine whether this keyword is good for us because remember we want to find a keyword that not too many other sites are using and are related to us and then we also want to find a keyword that people are actually searching because we can have this great keyword that no other site is using that is related to us but if no one is doing a search for that keyword then it's pointless because that means you're not going to get any traffic to your site through that particular keyword if no one is searching it and on the flip side we can have, you know, a, a keyword that's get that gets searched pretty regularly, but if every site, if like if if it has a high competition level, then we're not going to get that magic high rank placement on a search engine. So that keyword is not is pointless to us. Okay, so sort of a relative scale, but the baseline that I give everyone is is this: you want a keyword that has a low competition level and it has an average of 500 searches a month. That's the baseline. That's the that's where you that's the perfect that's the perfect keyword right there. Now, with this, you may find certain keywords that either have a high competition level, but because they have something like a um, a quarter of a million monthly searches, they may still work out for you. Okay? And you may also find some keywords that, you know, that have like a decent amount of monthly searches, all right? But, oh, sorry, oh, you may find some keywords that don't get any monthly searches, all right, but also have a low competition level. And you could have to determine like, okay, do I wanna make this keyword work or not? But like I said, you don't necessarily wanna use a keyword. Even if a keyword has a low competition level, you don't necessarily wanna pick a keyword that has less than 500 average monthly searches, all right? Which is why I put the baseline at 500. All right, any questions so far? Because now we're going to look at the, uh, Google's Keyword Planner and get a better idea of what I'm talking about here. Okay, cool. All right, so let's hop over to Google and pull up Google's Keyword Planner. Oh, don't want to exit the meeting here. Okay, let's exit out of that. Let's go to Google. All right, so we have Google here. You can just go to Google keyword planner or you can just go adwords.google.com your choice I'm going to share this with everyone just so that <clears throat> later on if you choose to look this up you have a direct link so I'm going to sign into AdWords here and you don't necessarily need to have a Google account to sign into ad into AdWords Right, if you have a Gmail account, that's great. If not, you just need to register with whatever account you have. And I don't, uh, here we go. So as you can see here, I have an account with Google that's not a, Google, a Gmail account. Just to kind of show you guys that it could be done. 
I'm gonna go ahead and sign on in there. All right, just wait after they load my account data. Okay, so <coughs> if for any reason you log in and you're not right here, where you wanna be is you wanna be on the Tools tab. And under Tools, you wanna to go to Keyword Planner. That's where you wanna go in case it doesn't automatically put you on that, on this particular tab. Now, if you've never used Google AdWords before or Google's Keyword Planner before, um, you may run into a situation where it seems like Google's trying to charge you. They are. You, this is a free service. You don't have to pay anything for the service. So if you run into a situation where it seems like you're trying, they're trying to charge you and you can't get out of it, just email our support team. We'll just email you instructions on how to get around it. Okay, because again, the Keyword Planner is a free service that you don't have to be charged for. Now, there are other services similar to the Keyword Planner out there. All right, so... <clears throat> When you use those services, um, you can use the other services. Sorry, let me take a step back. The other services out there like the Keyword Planner. Some are free, some are not. All right, they're paid services, and the paid services give you a lot more detail. All right, but still, at the end, at the end of the day, if you choose to use the Keyword Planner, it gives you pretty good detail, at least to achieve what it is we're trying to achieve. All right, and if you decide to use a paid service, that's fine as well. It would just it it still doesn't it still doesn't take away from the two things that we're looking for, which is how many sites are using this particular keyword and how many searches this particular keyword again a month, right? That is no matter what keyword plan you use, whether a paid option or a free option, those are the two things you want to look at, okay? So we're here in Keyword Planner, and what we want to do is we want to search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. Okay, so all we want to do here is we have our list of 20 to 25 keywords, and we want to take each one and plug it in here where it says your product or service. All right, so let's say, let's say my keyword I'm looking up here is adventure travel. So let's just, just assume for sake of an example, that is what I specialize in. So I put adventure travel in that section there. And then I want to target, right? I want to target my immediate location because more times than not, that's who I'm marketing to or that's who where my customer base is, okay? So I'm gonna target my area, and I live in Philadelphia. Obviously, I'm gonna keep it English because I'm targeting English-speaking folks. If anyone out there is targeting whether Spanish-speaking or whatever the case may be, you could change that targeting as well. All right, and that's and, I, and that's pretty much it. So I have the keyword I'm looking up, targeting my my local area, and I live in Philadelphia, and I'm talking targeting, targeting English speakers, and I'm gonna go ahead and get ideas. Okay, <clears throat> so as we see right here, right off the bat, you see it gives me adventure travel, and it's telling me adventure travel gets between 1,000 to 10,000 average monthly searches, all right? Now, obviously, that's a huge range, but the way I always go about it is that I, I always take, you know, the smallest end of it, all right? So 1,000 to 10,000, all right? So... 1,000 is still more than my baseline of 500. So it does get a decent amount of searches because it gets over 5,000 searches. It goes over 500 searches a month. But here is the part that makes this not a great keyword for me is the competition level. It has it at high. Now, the, the way Google, um, Google Keyword Plan tells you how many other websites are using it, are using this particular keyword, is based off of a, it's based off of a sort of like a, a grade. Low, medium, high. Now, ideally, in the perfect world, again, remember, 500 monthly searches on the low end, low competition level. That's the perfect keyword. Okay. Now, there could be instances where I would take a high competition level, but a low of a thousand of of a thousand monthly searches is not enough monthly searches for me to take a high competition level. So in this particular case, even though it gets over 500 monthly searches, because the competition level is high, adventure travel is not going to be one of my strong keywords. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions on that? Now, 
one thing I'm just going to quickly address here is this price. I know some people are probably looking like, huh, I thought Chase said that it's not going to cost us anything. It doesn't, all right? What this price is right here, okay, is pretty much if you decide, right? And remember, this is something that, and I'm going to say that if you have the money and budget for this, by all means, do it. But if you decide to have Google optimize this keyword for your website, this is the price you're going to have to pay each time traffic comes to your website through a search using this keyword. So that means anytime someone does a, a search that includes adventure travel and ends up on my website, I end up paying Google $2.53 for each person Google brings in. All right. Now, the reason I say that if you have the money and budget to do this is that $2.50 may seem relatively inexpensive. But if Google does what Google does best and optimize this keyword for you, very soon you're going to be in one of those good problem situations is where it's going to, the bill is going to go a lot higher, but then you're going to be seeing a lot of traffic to your website from this particular keyword. All right. So again, I'm not discouraging anyone from using this. <clears throat> I just say that make sure you have the budget to do it because $2.53 can become hundred dollars very quickly if Google does what Google does best All right but if you have the money in your budget then this should be part of your SEO efforts is getting Google to to um, optimize these quote unquote what the Google calls AdWords for your website because there's another way of utilizing or leveraging Google to drive traffic to your website okay so does that all make sense about the suggested bid and that price right there any questions on that Right, awesome. Okay, but so <clears throat> here, here's a cool thing about Google's keyword tool and a lot of other keyword tools out there, not just Google, a lot of keyword tools do the same things. This is that they give you other keywords that are related to the keyword you entered, all right? So if you scroll down, we can see some of the other keywords that Google gives us back <coughs> that may or may not work for us. Okay, so if we take a look at some of these, Oh, Diane asks, if you get too many visits to your website, can you turn off the charges? Yes, you can. You can always suspend it at any point. So if you decide to have Google optimize a keyword for you and you realize, okay, I'm getting a lot of traffic or the bill's getting too high, you can definitely pause it at any point in time so that you don't continue to get charges. Then obviously, you know, Google will stop optim you know, driving traffic to your website for that keyword. But by then, you may have already, you know, gotten a decent placement and you just need to continue to do other things. You may already get in a decent placement on the search engine and you just use other things to to help maintain that position okay so it definitely can be so Diane if it's something you're thinking about and to everyone else out here if, it's, if this is something you're thinking about it definitely could be one of the things you use in your arsenal of uh, SEO efforts but you definitely need to start with doing it first I would strongly encourage you guys to <clears throat> brainstorm and come with your five strong keywords. Start with your five strong keywords first before you start dealing with because more times than not, the way I would usually go about using this, or if I was to pay Google to optimize a keyword for me, usually my criteria would be is this a particular keyword that is mean that is very relevant to me. So for example, if adventure travel was some was was something that even though it's not a great keyword for me, but I need to, I would like to use it, it's a it's a market that I want to break. Then yeah, then I'll probably pay Google to optimize adventure travel for me. Okay, but I wouldn't do it right off the bat. I'll first find the my five to seven strong keywords that I don't have to pay for first. Okay. All right, so we could take a look at some of the other options that Google or some of the other keywords Google has given us to see if they work for us. So overseas adventure travel. Well, that could be a keyword that works for me. All right, I probably sell quite a few <clears throat> adventure travel products, or adventure travel destinations that are overseas. So overseas adventure travel still pertains to me, right? And look at this. On the low end, it gets 10,000 monthly searches and the competition level is medium, all right? So monthly searches on the low end, still way above 500 monthly searches. So that's a plus. The competition level is low. It's not low, but it's medium and it's giving me back about 10,000 monthly searches on the low end and 100,000 on the high end. So for 
even though the competition level is medium, this will still be a good keyword for me, right? Because I'm getting well over 500 monthly searches on this keyword on the low end. So overseas adventure travel might be one that I want to use, okay? But if I look at adventure holidays, I'm pretty sure I don't want to use this one because on the low end, I'm only getting 100 monthly searches, which is well below our 500 baseline. And the competition level is medium, which is above low. So it just won't work for me. All right, are you guys starting to get the gist? You scroll down, you see some more. I see a lot of mediums. I see a lot of highs. See if I can see any lows in here that we can look at and see what kind of monthly searches they're getting. All right, so I don't see anything else on this first page. Let me go to the next page, see what else, what other options Google gives me. So I got a, I got a couple lows here, <clears throat> but even on the high end, it's not getting me up to 500 monthly searches. So even though the competition level is low, I'm going to be a no-go for those. That won't work for me. Let's see what other options in here. Some more lows, but low competition levels. Now here's a perfect one, a venture company. All right? So I may I would definitely want to use a venture company if it relates. Okay. Um if I am if I'm a venture travel agency, a venture company may still relate to me, you know, because I still sell adventure products, uh venture trips. And this particular keyword gets on the low end. 1,000 monthly searches, which is well above our 500 baseline. And the competition level is low, which is where we want to be. We want, so one of like, remember what I said one of those perfect keywords is up 500 or above monthly searches on the low end and a low competition level, a venture company gives me that. So I definitely want to snatch that keyword up and that'd be one of my five to seven strong keywords. All right. <clears throat> so this is this starting to make sense to everyone? All right. Any questions on this? All right. So we're using Google's keyword plan to figure out, to show us two things. <clears throat> How many monthly searches the keyword we want is getting and what the competition level is. Okay. All right. Awesome. So we have our five to seven strong keywords. What now? Okay. Well, that's the foundation as I mentioned before. So You've done your keyword research. You've come up with five to seven strong keywords that you're going to use. You've laid the foundation. You have this. Before you can do anything else, you want to make sure you have this. Okay, so now I have my five to seven strong. What am I doing? Okay, well, we're going to build on that. All right, we're going. That's the whole purpose. You're going to build on those key on 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 um, your SEO efforts now, and going to actually start to SEO your website because now you have the keywords you want to use. So let's hop back into our presentation here. So <clears throat> you remember how I gave we were I was giving you that story about the birth of the search engine and how Google became you know such the big power broker in search engines as that it is today. Well, <clears throat> to kind of sim um, simplify. Google's algorithm, what Google looked at, which not all search engines sort of follow to make sure that the websites that came back um, in search results were actually relevant, is that what Google started to do is start to look at the content that's on the website, okay? Start to crawl the website and actually look at content in specific areas of the website to make sure that this particular website was relevant to you. Because if a website has keywords that say adventure travel, then if it's a really an adventure travel website, then content on the website would also talk about adventure travel. Okay. So Google has this elaborate uh, algorithm with search, I won't just say Google now, also doesn't have this elaborate algorithm that look that crawl the content on your website to make sure that whatever keywords you're using, that the site is actually related to those particular keywords. Right. And these and these are the things that <clears throat> that you do to help optimize your website for search engines. Okay, so you want to build unique content around these keywords. Now, the content comes in many different forms, right? And one of the first forms that we're going to look at today is the meta information of your website. And in the advanced course, we talk, we we discuss, you know, additional content and other things that you can do. But for today, now that we have our five to seven strong keywords, 
we're going to first look at the meta information or the meta content of your website. Okay, so what is meta? What are the meta tags? What is your meta information? Well, the simplest way I can describe your meta information on your website is, is a summary of your website. Actually, you know what? A summary of your web pages. All right. And the reason I'm saying web pages is because <clears throat> when it comes to the meta information on your website, each page of your website needs to have its own meta information. Because the way the the way your website works and the way search engines crawl websites is they crawl each page of your website. Okay. There's no the 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 search engines don't crawl your website and then just say, oh, this is a whole website and that's that. No, it calls each page of your website because depending on how big your website is, you may have different pages that talk about different things. So for example, there are probably quite a few agents out here that sell that don't just sell cruise, they also sell tours. So that means you're going to have a page that talks about cruises and you're going to have a page that talks about tours. These are two distinct separate forms of, of um, vacation. All right. And when you're plug, when you're utilizing keywords, you're going to have different keywords that talk to the, each one of these pages. So you want to make sure that each one of these pages has meta information that summarizes the content that's on that particular page. All right. So just think of meta information as a summary of your website. And uh, I don't know how many guys remember the whole Snowden thing that happened a couple of years ago where it, we all discovered that we found out <clears throat> based on Snowden's leaks that the National Security Agency has been keeping meta information on U.S. citizen phone calls. Okay. And the whole purpose and the whole reason that was, because if you remember correctly, for those of you guys that can remember that one of the defenses for the for the NSA doing this was that well we didn't record the phone calls or we didn't hold on to the recordings of the phone calls right but they held on to the meta information which was pretty much a summary of the phone call which is why it was still just as bad so when you think of meta think of summary summarizes the content on your page all right now what does this meta information look like all right well the two ones that we're going to focus on specifically are meta title and meta description. And there's also something called meta keywords. But if you remember, something I've been sort of sprinting through this whole um, this whole course is that search engines don't just look at keywords anymore. They very, very look at keywords anymore because they've because of how keywords keywords were so abused in the beginning. All right? Search engines look at more than just the keywords. All right? So we want to focus on the meta title and meta description for each page of our website. Okay, and we want to see what does that look like. What is what does that actually look like when it's spelled out? What shape does that take? Okay, and let's go back over to Google very quickly. Oh, I moved too soon. Dismiss that. Okay, so let's go back to Google. Let's go open up a Google search window here. And let's do a search so we can take a look at this meta information. So adventure travel, let's stick with adventure travel as an example. So let's say I'm looking for, I'm looking to take an adventure trip. Adventure travel, all right? So let's do a search for adventure travel here. <clears throat> See what we get back here, okay? So here is the meta information. All right, for each page of these of these different websites that come back in my search results. All right, so the first thing you can already look at, you can just notice right off the bat, right, is that the meta information is displayed to help the person doing the the um doing the search figure out whether the website is valid or not. Okay. Also, you can obviously tell that. The search engine is crawling the meta information because it is displaying the meta information and it's highlighting the keywords in the meta information. So what is the meta information? Well, this right here is all the meta information. All right. That's all meta information. All right. And you can see the keywords highlighted there. All right. Adventure travel right there. Okay. And obviously my search was adventure travel. Now this top this part right here, the bolded part, that is what we call the meta title. OK, 
Okay. This part that's in the lower, that's in the smaller font in gray, that is what we call the meta description. Mm -hmm. So it does two things. First off, it it <clears throat> tells the search engine a summary of the content that's going to be on that particular page. And it also tells the actual user, the person doing the search, what content is going to be on this particular web page. So not only the search engine sees not only does the search engine see this content, but the actual person doing the search sees this content. So there are a couple of guidelines to this to make sure that you're entering the right thing or filling out your your meta title meta description correctly. Okay, so let's start with the meta title. All right, first things first is that you want to make sure you're using your keyword in the meta title. Okay, at least one of them, and it's, you probably won't be able to get more than one keyword or key phrase in the meta title. All right, so you want to make sure you're using at least one of your keywords or key phrases in the meta title. Second thing is that you want your meta title to be a short description of what is going to be found on that particular web page. Next, you want to include your company name or your website name in the meta title. And last but not least, your meta title should be no more than seven to eight words long. I think it should be no more than seven words long, to be honest. All right, so that's a lot. So <clears throat> again, to recap, your meta title needs to use at least one of your keywords. It needs to be a very short description of what content is going to be found on that page. It should also include your company name or your website name. And it shouldn't be more than seven words long. Okay, and if we look at some of these meta titles that we have here, now this first one, Adventure Travel, well, this is sort of the luck of the straw here. Adventure Travel is the keyword. Adventure Travel is also the company name. And Adventure Travel is also a description of what content is going to be found on this particular web page. Because if I click on this, I'm probably going to find content about Adventure Travel, maybe options for Adventure Travel, you know, whatever the case may be. Okay? If I look at this one, All right. Well, it has the keyword adventure travel. All right. Adventure travel is also a description of what I'm going to find on this page. And it also includes the company name, which is Lonely Planet, or the website name, company or website name, which is Lonely Planet. Okay. And if I look at this one, this next option here, same idea. All right. Adventure travel, again, is the company name, is the company name for this particular company. It's also describing what I'm going to find on this particular next page. It's also the keyword. All right. And <clears throat> they also kind of put a descriptor here, inspiring impactful travel. Okay. And if you look at the three that we've looked at so far, one, two, three, four, five, they're under seven words long. Now, <clears throat> let's look at this next one. All right, and this is a good example to bring up. So Adventure Travel, Trade Association. So Adventure Travel, that's the keyword, all right? Uh, what do you call it? This is the Adventure Travel Trade Association. That's the name of the website or the company, all right? There's a descriptor here that's going to explain what we might find on this particular web page, a global network of adventure, but then it's cut off. This is the reason why you want to keep it seven words or less, right? Because if it's too long, the search engine is just going to cut it off and give us sort of the ellipsis here, right? And as far as the search engine reading, the search engine is still going to read it. But when it comes to the actual person doing the search, if you need that full sentence to describe completely what's going to be found on this next web page and it gets cut off, then you're putting yourself at an advantage, a disadvantage. Okay? So this particular title has one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight keywords. I mean, sorry, eight words. It's over eight words. So the rest of it is cut off, right? And it doesn't give me a full description because it's cut off of what I'm going to find. So it's very possible as a user, I might just skip over this and look at the other ones that actually do. Does that make sense? 
Are you guys with me on this on this uh, meta title stuff? So again, one last time before I start talking about the meta description. All right, your meta title should be seven words or less. Okay, include your keyword, include your company name, and have a very short description of what content is going to be found on the on the web page. All right. Now the <clears throat> meta description we have a little bit more to work on uh, to work with rather, but it still has some of similar sort of restrictions to it or guidelines to it rather. So here's the meta description. So meta description you have a little bit more to work with. You can go to about three short sentences, and when I say short sentences, sentences should be about five to six words long. So three, so about two to three short sentences. All right. You want to make sure you use the same keyword that you used in your meta title. Same idea here. Your 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 sentences should be complete sentences that describe what content is going to what content is going to be on the web page. Okay. So if we look at some of these, we get a better idea. So here we have adventure travel. The meta description is adventure travel provides travel content to travel agencies. Travel crews and vacations content for travel agencies, advanced into applications, web, and it's cut off because it's way more than three short sentences. So same thing applies here. If you need, <clears throat> if you need the full descriptor to explain to anyone doing the search what this website's about and it gets cut off, then you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. Okay. But you still see it has the keyword there that matches the keyword in the in the main in the in the meta title and you see that it does it does describe what content could be found on the next page All right and let's look at adventure travel for lonely planet let's look at that meta description All right this one seems to hit the number on the head inspirational travel ideas for lovers of adventure travel and activity holidays embracing everything from cycling and trekking to surfing and rafting so short sentences uses at least the same keyword that is in the meta title okay and it and it, it's it's uh, what do you call it? And it's describing the content that's going to be on the page. So travel ideas for the adventure travel lover. Okay. Does that make sense? Here goes another one that gets cut off, but still has the basic idea in mind. Adventure travel finds the best adventure companies and stories for you to constantly remain equipped and inspired to travel the world. We are the voice of, it's cut off because it goes obviously way longer, but it still has the keyword in there and it still describes what kind is going to be found on the next page. All right. So does the main description make sense to you guys? Again, two to three short sentences. And when I say short sentences, I mean about sentences that are five to six words long needs to include at least one keyword that matches the keyword that you put in the meta title and it needs to describe the content that's going to be on that's on that particular page okay any questions on the meta title meta description <clears throat> now with your agent studio website as i mentioned each page of your website is going to need this meta information so if you wanted to add this to your Agent Studio website, you're going to have to log into your control panel. <coughs> Excuse me. And as I wait for this to load, just a quick uh, reminder that you guys, if you haven't taken the advanced course, please take the advanced course because we build on this. All right. But. Okay, where do you enter this information in the Google Keyword Planner? Okay, so Diane, what do, which information are you referring to? Are you talking about the meta information, the meta title, meta description? All right, so the meta title, meta description, you do not enter to the key, enter into the keyword plan and key, keyword planner. You enter this information onto the back end of your website. And I'm going to show you guys how to do this now. All right, so the meta title, meta description are, are not anything you enter into the keyword planner, right? The keyword plan is specifically to get you your five to seven strong keywords. Okay, that's what the keyword plan does, right? With the meta title and meta description, this is where you're going to start using your keywords. 
Okay, so if a, so with my example of venture travel, assuming that was my keyword, I'm going to use adventure travel in my meta title and my meta description. All right, on my website, I can use it for just a page that talks about meta titles. I mean, sorry, that talks about adventure travel. So if I, so if adventure travel is just one of the different things that I offered um, as a travel agency, then whatever page talks about adventure travel or whatever pages talk about adventure travel, that's where I would use the adventure travel keyword. If my whole website is about adventure travel, then on each page in my website, I will I will use adventure travel as a keyword. But again, you should not have duplicate metadata. So they should two pages should not have the same meta title or meta description. The meta title and the meta description need to be unique for each page, even if the two pages talk about the same thing. So the two, if my two pages talk about adventure travel, that's fine. But my meta title meta description needs to be different for each page. Now they can both use the keyword adventure travel in the meta title meta description, but it should still be different. Does that make sense? And Diane, does that answer your question? And I'm going to show you very quickly where <clears throat> we add the meta title. So I'm logged into the back end of my agent studio control panel. So I'm going to go to pages. And I'm going to go to site pages to pull up every page of my website. Because again, we're going to add in meta information for each page of our website. Okay. So let's start with my home page. So I'll go to my home page. And just give it a second to load here. Okay, so the page is loaded. So I'll scroll to the bottom here. And each page of your website has this SEO meta information, meta title, meta description, and meta keywords. All right, so this is where you're going to enter it for each page of your website. Now remember, for your meta title, it's going to be <clears throat> no more than seven words long. Include one of your keywords. Preferably the keyword that best explains or best associates with the content that's on this particular page. Okay, so I'm on the home page. All right, so whatever keyword that speaks to the content on my home page, my home page is most likely going to be general. It's going to be a summary of things. So for every keyword that best describes my business, that's probably what I would use here. All right, it's going to describe what content is going to be on this page. So if this was like, so let's use, I'm going to stick with my adventure travel. Right, so say I sell a lot of adventure travel, so I might put something like uh, your adventure travel expert. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm seven words long. I have my company name. So seven words long. I already have my company name, Seas Day Cruises. I have my keyword, adventure travel. I have a short descriptor, your adventure travel expert. So I'm telling the search engine as well as anyone that brings this site up and gets this site in the search result that what you're going to find this on this uh, page is something about your adventure travel experts. Okay, Oop, if I could just spell travel right. <clears throat> All right, so that's my meta title. Okay, so my meta description, again, this is my homepage, so I can be very sort of general, especially if adventure travel is what I do more than anything else. Okay, so <clears throat> for a descriptor, search. All right, so I put some sort of search out adventure travel options to find the perfect vacation for you. All right, again, have my keyword in there. It's definitely well under, so I have my keywords in there. All right, it's definitely the right length. It's under two to three sentences. 
and it's a complete sentence. I have one complete sentence that, again, describes the content that's going to be on this page. And then under keywords, I can either add all my seven keywords or just the keywords that relate to this particular page. It's completely up to me at that point because it's not as important. Okay? And you're going to do this for each page of your website. Does that make sense to everyone? <clears throat> All right, so Rain, that's a good question. And in the advanced course, we do talk about this a bit. So, um, but in so Rainer asked in the blog page when you have a different topic every time, what should you put in, or would you change it for the current entry? All right, so. So for your blog page, each blog post has its own metadata. All right. So you're definitely going to <clears throat> you're definitely going to have a unique one for each blog post. Okay. But and this is why we cover this in the advanced course. When you're putting together your blog, right? Because when you put together your blog, you also want to keep SEO in the back of your mind. All right. When you put together your blog, you want to kind of Keep in mind what keyword or keywords you want to utilize in that blog post. Okay, so let's say, for example, okay, so one day you talk about adventure travel. Another day you talk about destination weddings. Another day you talk about, you know, um, cruises, whatever the case may be, all right? In each one of these, you want to keep, in each one of them, you want to make sure that you're, you have in back in mind what keywords you want to use in that blog post. Okay, because even though you have a different topic every time, you know, you still want to, that's why I say five to seven strong keywords, so that you have sort of like a, an inventory of keywords that you can use. So like when you're, if you're creating a blog post, you know, you already have five to seven strong keywords that are related to your business that you can use in that blog post, right? Or if you're creating a page of content, you have five to seven strong keywords that you can use in there, all right? So, to answer your question, Rainer, yes, each blog post has to have its own unique meta title, meta description, but the same rules apply. So whenever you put together a blog post, just want to keep in the back of your mind which keyword or keywords is relevant to this particular blog post. Okay, Rainer? All right, so Dan, for the keywords, do you need to place a semicolon to separate each word? Uh, you can do a comma. So if you add in keywords, to your meta keywords, you want to put a comma after each keyword. So adventure travel, cruise, tours, whatever the case may be. Okay, Diane? Any other questions? All right, any other questions? All right, guys. Well, Thank you guys for joining me for today's course, Intro to Search Engine Optimization. If you want a recording of this course, email our support team. If you want a PowerPoint of this course, email our support team. Please make sure you email our support team because even if you tell me here, I may forget between leaving here and getting back to my desk. So just email our support team and we'll get it over to you. All right. And if you have any questions about SEO in general after this course, you know, email our support team and we'll let you know. I just include our support email down here at the bottom there. Oops. I'm going to put it again because I, I left off the .com. So feel free to reach out to us, use our brain, pick our brains, and we'll definitely be willing to help you guys out. Okay. Now, if you haven't taken the advanced course, I strongly advise that you guys take the advanced course. But in the meantime, you have a lot of homework to get started on. Start doing your keyword research. Again, if you're doing SEO right, this is the foundation of your SEO right here. It's finding those, just finding those five to seven strong keywords that you can use. Because once you have your five to seven strong keywords, you can utilize them in blog posts and creating other pages of content within your website and so forth. All right. All right. Well, thank you, guys. You guys have a great rest of the week, and I hope to see you guys in my next course. Uh, you're welcome, Diane. Take care, everyone. Bye.